Yo guys, welcome back to another Dalmatian Memorial for each video. Okay, so it's another week, which means another tier list. And I did put this tier list off by, I think, two weeks or a week. Basically, I tried to, I tried to time the dark tier list, which is what we're doing now, with the release of any Halloween banner or event that we may have coming out. Uh, sadly, they haven't given us a Halloween event. I, I think they're basically opted to skip the Halloween event just to catch up because I do believe production has been put back by COVID and all of those situations, which is unfortunate, but at least they did update the uh, dark pool, which has been sort of neglected for a while. The, the, the last dark unit we got before Tiona and Tione uh, was the Otal. <clears throat> and, and even though he's not really that old, I wouldn't say that five months is that long ago for a unit to come out all the units we currently have are starting to dip and if you compare them to other elements you can see that dark is falling off in consistency compared to other elements anyway so before we get into anything else i will say um my upload schedule has been a bit crazy i have been uh, moving this past week and a bit and it has been a nightmare i don't even have wi-fi installed yet my wi-fi is being installed on thursday which means all of my previous videos were uploaded using my phone data which was a nightmare <coughs> but uh from thursday onward we, onwards we should be okay now let's go over the criteria for the tier list as usual okay so this tier list and like all the other elements tier list compares units within the element so i'm not going to be comparing units within this element to any unit of another element that's not how it works that's not how we score things saying that you may notice that some units say for example within s tier in certain elements are not as good as other units in s tier of a different element that's because the elements are not compared they're just compared within the element i said elements so many times there uh, on top of that war game utility functionality and viability is not as valuable on these tier lists as usage or the same factors for other game modes so it may be that some of the best war game units are not considered high tier units on these tier lists. It may be the complete opposite. It all depends on uh, how well rounded they are as units. I do use a quantifiable scaling system or measuring system, sorry, to try and remove as much personal bias from these tier lists as, as I can. Uh, I, I'm not going to reveal how I do it or, or what the scaling or measuring system is, but I do have a bracket system that allows me to sort of calculate as much as possible it does mean these tier lists do take a while in fact usually it's the only thing i do on a sunday <laughs> but i've had a couple of sundays off so what the hell anyway um is there anything else oh yes so if a unit is missing from the tier list it's because it does not exist on the eu server which means it predates the eu server which means it's so old it really doesn't matter if it's on the tier list or not i don't see it making a massive impact whether it's there or not However, if you feel that I'm missing units that even though are old or older than the EU server still have a uh, large amount of viability within the dark element itself, please let me know and I'll do as much information and add and update this tier list appropriately. You can find all of this or you can find this tier list in a couple of days on my discord as well as every other element tier list I've done so far in my guild uh, in my familiar discord in the guide channel uh i do update them every time elements come out and i will be posting update videos in the future for tier lists anyway i've waffled on for basically nearly four minutes let's get into it and go over the tier list starting with d tier we're only going to do the honorable mentions because there are not enough basically these first few tiers i just do the honorable mentions i'm not going to go over every unit otherwise the video will be way too long so honorable mentions we have the asfi for the guard rate debuff, she makes a great sack unit for Record Buster if you're just starting out. I mean, if you have the Anniversary Earth Otal, she, he's probably a better sack unit to take. But if you don't, and you're missing, and you're only missing guard rate debuff from your team for Record Buster, say, then the Asfi makes a good sack unit. Kurumi from the Data Live uh, collaboration, pretty old now, but she still has a res Dark Resistance debuff equal to that of the highest resistant element resist debuff we have for the dark element which literally just came out so a good sack unit nonetheless if you don't have or you only need a higher dark element resist debuff let's move on to c tier okay so same thing for c tier here i'm going to do some honorable mentions not in order i will say this 
C tier, I consider, like, I don't want people to say that I'm, I don't want people to think that I'm saying anything in C tier is not good. I would consider C tier average, not bad, average. And given that Dark has been un, uh, uh, I don't know the, the word I'm looking for, but considering Dark hasn't really been nurtured or taken care of as much as other elements, this is where the problem comes in that the majority of uh, units you probably have for your dark team will be in C tier. Uh, and it's the same with other elements, to be fair. The majority of your teams will be built up of C tier units because S tier units and or A tier units and B tier units are going to be harder to come by, especially if you're free to play. Saying that, honorable mentions. Uka Uka's okay. He has a decent amount of damage. He has very little utility. He only increases his own guard and self, uh, his, his self guard and counter rate. He does, however, have some self-sustain by healing 10% of the damage he does with his skill too. So, as for, like, he he's a very good filler unit if you already have all of the utility you need in the sense of debuffs and buffs, and you just want to fill that last slot with someone who's going to do an okay amount of damage, Uka's still decent. Now, keep in mind this tier list does take into consideration or measure these units based on them being in the... Uh, having... Uh, been max limit broken and max hero ascended and being in the optimal situations uh, saying that another honorable mention would be Elmina Elmina is a good sack unit if you need a 30% AoE damage increase for your team other than that she's really only good in war games her AoE damage for any other her AoE damage isn't really fantastic in fact she doesn't really match up to many other uh, dark units in terms of her AoE damage which is pretty sad and the reason for that is because she provides she she has an ailment she provides poison and that doesn't really work outside of war games so it's a real um it's it's really it's it's something that's really holding her back like if she did more damage i you know she'd still be c tier but she'd be you know uh of, of i would say a better caliber unit my final honorable mention here is the armid now where she may be considered pretty trash She's got a decent amount of utility and I honestly, I specifically use her for all of my 7th zone, uh, dark 7th zone because I only really need two damage dealers and then I take the, I take Haruhime obviously not being compared to Haruhime and then I take the Armid because she removes strength and magic debuffs and every 7th zone lowers strength and magic buff, uh, lowers strength and magic sorry, uh, by 25% so having someone there to remove strength and magic, like a strength and magic debuff sorry uh, is always going to make sure that I'm hitting as much as I possibly can. In saying that, let's move on to, well, the next tier. Okay, so we're on B tier, and no, this is not a joke, I'm not trolling, I'm, I'm just showing you that it's empty, and I want to discuss it. There's a reason that this is empty. Where the dark element has not really been taken care of, we've not really had many updates to the, like, the unit pool, or roster, there's a clear divide in what units are, you know, will excel in what they do and units that are just average and this is that divide literally the b tier for me is empty it's just a line that separates what's average and what's above average in the dark element you feel free to disagree with me you probably may have one or two recommendations from the c tier that you feel might go into b tier or someone in a tier you may feel is b tier but i'm going to move on to a tier now anyway Okay, so we're in A tier, and hear me out before you jump the gun and get too angry with me. I do, this is a preliminary, these tier lists will be updated, and upon further testing, I can update these lists uh, as I go. So if you have relevant data to say that these units should be higher or lower, please uh, let me know in the comments. This is basically me just going on my own experience, uh, my own <clears throat> quantifying system, and trying to place them as accurately as possible with new units it is always going to be a little bit more difficult to place them without having the relevant statistics anyway i will say it was a little bit harder to place uh tiona um and again i forgot to put my phone on silent i'm sorry about that i'm gonna bring up the game uh and i'm gonna look at it there's a reason that i struggled to place tiona here and that reason basically is <laughs> she has no let me, let me max her out. We're gonna go. Uh, we might as well go over everything. She has uh, somewhat only. I uh, I think it's like so. Tiona here, right? 
only has a tiny, like a minuscule amount of strength lower than her sister. Uh, but my problem here is she doesn't have a single super modifier. She does have debuffs and I always value debuffs higher than buffs because debuffs, even as a sack, will basically be relevant to units that weren't on the field when they happened. And she, I mean, I would say that these, this is a great debuff. But we all know now this is not comparing outside of the element. This is basically just an acknowledging a fact that everyone is going to be using Harahime. So if you're using a mono team, you have to consider the team basically free of that element units and Harahime. Given that, I don't think lowering strength and magic is considerably relevant to building a team. But it's still a decent amount of utility if you come into a, a scenario where you basically can put Haruhime in, on the back line and sub her in later on this is still going to be helpful also having the highest element debuff resistance like element resistance debuff uh, for this element is still significantly good it's the problem is she has no so she has a somewhat it's only a minor difference she has a little bit of a lower strength stat but she has no super modifiers there is no considerable utility here i mean counter rate is fantastic don't get, me, don't get it twisted counter rate is great because it's if you didn't know where a large bulk of your damage will come from in different game modes especially record buster uh but the minus 30 percent healing uh not fantastic no super modifiers and only a 20 percent modifier on her skill free Mm -mm. I, I usually like to see that at 40, uh, 30 or 40 being the base level for av what I would consider average. It does have a high penetration rate, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so part of me really wanted to put her in B tier, but the problem is because she's already a better caliber unit than anything else in C tier, the only thing stopping me from putting her in B tier was the fact that, well, yeah, she still has... She's still going to do a good amount of damage. She still has single target. She still has AoE. She still has utility. Even though it's not super, it is high. Uh, so, and well, the fact that I rate debuffs higher than buffs in terms of utility, it was always going to make it so that she was valued a little bit more than if, say, she had buffs instead. Going back to the tier list, however. So there's, there, no one should argue with me as to where she belongs. She buffs, you know, I'm going to bring the game back up so you can see. I unfortunately didn't pull her, but I'm, I now need to save. <laughs> I now need to save. Um, okay, so go back, sorry. This is what I'm saying. Okay, so the difference is, yeah, it's seven strength is the difference. Uh, she has a super modifier. Both of their essays are pretty um, bland in terms of usage. They, Outside of war game, they're not really going to be much helpful. But this, okay, this is the synth right here. The fact that she has a super modifier that gives her additional actions, and those actions are actual attacks plus a status buff minus one turn. So she removes buffs, like lowers buff duration by one turn every time she does this, and gains by doing this. This is going to be the skill that you spam for AOE scenarios. You 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 end up with an additional two actions every time it doesn't stack obviously it just resets so you're never going to run out of additionals between she's going to do a considerable amount more damage than her sister uh second aoe that also buffs allies strength and dark so i mean given that physical dark is basically the meta magic dark just isn't really a thing i mean it is and it isn't. The majority of people are just going to use physical like every other element. So buffing both is pretty good. 35% is a nice buff. Not crazy, not fantastic. It's a nice buff, especially for a skill that still does an attack. Uh, and then skill three, she has, okay, the 40% modifier that goes along for every self strength buff. Given like saying that she, this skill is going to hit hard. It doesn't have to be a super modifier. It's going to hit hard. Uh, and so there shouldn't really be any arguments as to why she's in A tier. If anything here, I may have to drop her sister down to B tier if I get more information on that. But we're going to jump over to S tier now and we're going to come into the near the end of the video. Okay, so we're in S tier and I have to say something. These units do not match up, in my opinion, to other S tier units from different elements. I, I need to say that now. But... 
given the rules are to compare within the element these are basically the best uh, dark units I would say exist within the element so starting with Goblin Slayer he is a self-sufficient single target nuka he has uh, type resistant element resist debuff uh, on his skill one skill one um, single target and AoE debuff damage increase um, on his skill two and then a self buffing skill three with a 40 is it I think it's a 40 percent modifier but actually I'm gonna jump in and check um it is indeed a 40 percent no wait no there okay my bad there is no modifier on this which is why his skill three doesn't really do as much damage as other single target units that fit the same kind of role if that makes sense like like beforehand uh, the tiona her skill three has a plus 40 percent damage for every self strength buff uh goblin slayer doesn't have that because he has a self strength and dark buff uh of 40 percent on his skill three so the, the first time you use it you won't get that 80 percent increase in damage but the second time you will so uh it's not i don't think it will do as much damage as say other single target users with a percentage modifier on their skill free but it's still gonna hurt coming back now uh he so he does that he also has a self 90 percent dark and strength buff on his sa which means not the first time he does it but the second time you sa it will hurt i personally get his sa damage or in the optimal situation get his sa damage up to 1.1 or 1.2 million which is considerably lower than single target nukas from other elements but it is what it is Okay, coming across from him, we have Philvis. Philvis goes the opposite direction. Philvis buffs her own dark and magic. Let me bring the game up. I can go through this with you. Okay, Philvis has an 80%. <laughs> oh my God. Philvis has an 80% modifier on her SA, which means it's already gonna do more damage than Goblin Slayers anyway, because it has that additional SA. Her skill one buffs her own magic and dark attack by 60%, which means uh, she's basically she's set up to do more damage than Goblin Slayer, but provides less utility. She does have utility skill two provides an increase in single target damage by 20%, and her skill three has that 40% additional damage modifier with a high crit rate. Oh my god! Okay, so 40% <laughs> increase for every self magic buff with a high crit rate. Um, so it's gonna get an additional 80% damage for uh, her skill one as well as whatever magic buffing assist she's got on her. And then if it crits, it's going to do even more damage. So basically, she's set up to just destroy. She is a nuke. Uh, we No point really going back. We know what the last unit is. It's Otal now. Let's <laughs> just have a quick look now. He is a really simple unit. There is no confusion about his rotations. He has great survivability because he increased his own physical resist and magic resist by 50%. That's stupidly high. Um, buffs his own dark... Oh, wait, yeah. Damage, uh, super dark physical attack, damage plus 40% for every, uh, for each self strength form. Self, mm hmm. Okay, right, so he has, <laughs> sorry, I just had to quickly reread everything. Uh, his SA does a buttload of damage. His skill one single target and has the 40% additional modifier for every self strength buff with a high crit rate. Skill two. Physical resist, magic resist, as well as strength and dark damage increase by 50%. That is the craziest self buff I think I've ever seen. Uh, and skill free, AoE super. So again, another super modifier. He's got two super modified damaging attacks. One single target, one AoE. But buffs his own strength and dark type. Buffs his own magic, uh, physical resist and magic resist. It's just a, it's mad. He does so much damage, and that's all he's designed to do. Beyond self buffing with skill two, you don't need to do anything but skill one or skill three, depending if you're single target and AOE. And that's one of the reasons he's S tier as well. The fact is he has a super modifier for both uh eventualities like whether you want to whether you're doing record buster or whether you're doing seven zone he's gonna be viable and that's just crazy and when i say viable he's gonna do a lot of damage all he needs is someone to lower physical resist magic resist and increase single target or aoe damage oh but look we have goblin slayer that's crazy <laughs> like uh but saying that, that is going to be the entire tier list now, guys. I hope you did enjoy the video. Sorry I made you wait so long for this. Uh, please make sure to drop a like if you did. Subscribe if you're not. Social media links will be in the description. There's my phone. Uh, but as always, guys.